and then it isn't long before you begin to find the faults in it and you get another automobile. And that goes on and on. You get a hat. This is the most wonderful hat. Oh, not for long. It won't be long before you'll have to get another hat because desires create more desires because of your attachment. You think you'll be satisfied with that new hat. No, you won't. You will not be satisfied. But there is a little way to overcome desire, which I will come to shortly. So the senses, the mind, and the reason are said to be its seat. Sensation especially is the seat of desire. Sen the senses, mind, and reason are said to be its seat. By these enveloping wisdom, it bewilders the dweller in the body. Therefore, O Arjuna, mastering first the senses, do thou slay this thing of sin and delusion, destructive of wisdom and of knowledge. Desire is no doubt a tyrant. Material desire is the tyrant that keeps us bound to outward consciousness, preventing us from knowing that we are children of God. Now going on, it is this desire, this king, this tyrant, which prevents us from the reality which we should know and realize spoken of in Psalms. 82nd Psalm, the sixth verse, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. As long as you are subject to desire and its attachment to the object of senses, can you realize that you are a child of God, as it says that we are gods? No, only when we know that consciousness of God within us, then we can realize that we are gods, that we are the children of the Most High. And so we must understand something about this desire. Now, we can fulfill our desires, the desires of the heart, with this body, right here and now. We don't have to wait till we pass on. If you wait, you pass on, you won't do it then anyway. You'll have to come again and use this body, because this body is the vehicle. It has taken, as we read in the Perceptor, eight million, eight million lifetimes of animals and lower forms to reach the stage of human being. Imagine, eight million lifetimes to reach the stage where we have something whereby we can find and know God and kill this tyrant desire. Now, what are we going to do? Are we going to, as the Master says, be like the moth that plunges in the flame of material desires and overlook the eternal things of life? No. He says we must make full use of this vehicle. It has taken a good long while to get it. Why should we throw it away? Why not utilize it? Why not make the best of it? It's best use. Use it in the best way to know God. Or, speaking negatively, to overcome this desire. King material desire. We can utilize it. And we can utilize it right now. And so, realize that while we have this vehicle, we must use it to the best of, ability, of our ability. And by this vehicle, we can attain God contact. In the autobiography we read, Sri Yukteswaji's statement that due to the uniqueness of the human being, with its, with its unique centers of the spine, it is possible to rise above all outward consciousness, all delusion, all desire, and attain oneness with God. As the Master told me, he says, don't neglect your body, but don't be bound by it. Take care of it, realizing it to be the only vehicle which you will have to know God. Imagine it. So we should watch that, and we should use it, as the Master said, to the best of our ability. Make the best use of it. And the best use that we can make of it is to utilize those unique centers of the spine whereby if we arouse and awaken them, we can easily overcome desire and attain the freedom of the soul. The animals cannot do that. They are bound by desire. 
And many, many human beings cannot do that. They are bound by desire. But those who wish to and will to can utilize the powers within us, the spiritual divine powers, arouse the centers of the spine, and without too much difficulty, can turn back the current from flowing outwardly to the objects of senses, turn it back inward to the heart, where all desire will be satisfied. Because that's the law. No desire is satisfied in the outward object of sense. Every desire is satisfied in the heart. And so you can know that way. To turn back the current of the senses. Turn it inward that you may satisfy every desire of the heart in the freedom of God's great consciousness within. We will come to that in a moment. Now, when you lose, remember when you lose attachment to the objects of senses, you are free. Now, that doesn't mean that you cannot eat turkey. But when you lose the attachment for the turkey, that's the point. Then you are free. So the next time you eat turkey, don't be engulfed in the, the leg, you know, which is so nice, or that nice white breast of the turkey, but turn it in and say, Father, the turkey is from you. Thou art in everything. I feel the great joy as I enjoy the turkey because you are in me. And all things come from you. If you do that, there will be no attachment and you will not lay up any more new desires which are so binding. And so in overcoming this king desire, there are two spiritual laws which we must never lose sight of. First, first, this is very important, if at the time of the enjoyment of the fulfillment of your desires, 